Okay, so this is the second part of the limit definition. We're gonna start off with a review of proving a linear limit. So prove that this limit is equal to seven. So we start with the discovery, and let's just write out what we have going on. If zero x minus a, which is x minus three, less than delta, then we want f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So that's what we wanna prove. We're going backwards, the discovery is scratch work. That two can come outside and divide. So it looks like we have our delta. Now our formal proof. We write out our given. And we're going to choose another given. Our delta is equal to epsilon over two. And that's given has a corresponding epsilon. And we start with the left-hand side. We want to prove that, simplify it. And if we have that, I multiply both sides by two, this is less than two delta. Do our substitution right here. Instead of delta, it's epsilon over two. Two's cancel, so we have proved our limit using the given, the two givens. Now I did just want to point out, here's a note. So what if I chose a smaller delta? I know I found delta equals epsilon over two, but what if I chose a smaller delta? For example, in this problem, what if I chose, let's say I choose delta equal, I don't know, epsilon over five, epsilon over six, over seven, all of those are smaller because five is bigger than two. So I'm just randomly choosing five. So at this point right here, we have less than two delta, which is definitely less than five delta, right? We know because delta is greater than zero, it's a distance. So five times delta is bigger than two times delta. And then we can use our smaller delta fives cancel. So if I'd chosen a smaller one, it works. The point of this is I could have more than one delta, but we want to usually choose the smaller one, okay? And that's going to be apparent for our next proof. That's not going to be a linear, it's going to be a quadratic function. So we're going to start off with our discovery, and let's write it out. If this, then this. So let's go ahead and work backwards. That's what we're trying to prove. So let's work backwards. So it looks like we have that one bounded already, but this one needs bounded to finish our proof. And since we just saw, if given a choice, let's Delta less than or equal to one is random. You can use delta is less than or equal to a half or something smaller, but I thought one is easier to work with. So we're gonna be using the given. Again, this is still our cheat sheet. Our given is x minus three is less than delta, which is less than or equal to one. So we have, actually it's strictly less than. So again, now we just use algebra to bound absolute value of x plus four. Let's write out the definition of absolute value between minus one and one. When I get x by itself, and add four. So now I have, so we don't quite have an inequality. We would need like six and negative six or eight and negative eight. Um, but we do see that six is greater than negative eight. So now we have the definition of absolute value and we've bounded it. So if that's true, well, can't I take X minus three, which is positive or greater than zero? And we almost have it. And this is, this is my given, my delta right here. 
So it looks like I'm going to choose delta equal to epsilon over 8. So that when I multiply times 8, the 8 will cancel, I get epsilon. Okay, so now that's our, our formal proof. Once we found our delta, that was whole whole point. Those are my two given. And actually, remember, we have two, we also forgot about, I almost forgot about delta is less than one. So we're gonna choose delta is equal to epsilon over eight or one, and it's gonna be the minimum of the two. So the smaller of the two will work. So we start with the left side of what we're trying to prove, the f of x minus l. Okay, so that's be pretty much, we just worked that out up here. And so we have our proof. This is strictly less than epsilon. Q, E, D. And that's how you do it.